welcome to Tinkering with Etkelar. What's on the bench for this episode? Another HP multimeter, indeed! My collection is getting there. Not that I need every model ever made, but a good selection across the various decades would be nice indeed. Now for this one, it is a mobile unit, the 3476B. It is an early digital meter capable of voltage and current measurements in AC and DC as well as resistance measurement. The display is tiny, yes, but there is a reason for it. Bubble LEDs! Woohoo! Most people only know these from old calculators or wristwatches. The auction also included a carry bag. And apparently, a set of test leads. I am happy! Also, this is the first vintage test gear that arrived here with the original manual. Usually I have to hunt down one or find a PDF. Nice! Kids, this is when the manufacturer included a full set of schematics in the owner's manual. Take note! But before plugging it in, the usual deep cleaning. Who knows what horrors await within? Whoops! Spring-loaded fuses. Check. Two of those even. It seems that the lead sockets double as fuse replacement ports. Strange design indeed. Also, note the distinct absence of the advertised battery pack. The previous owner clearly removed it. But at least, no leaking inside. Ah, good thing I didn't turn it on. The sticker said 208 to 250 volts. But it does need internal changing first. Well, I could read the manual first too, but where's the fun in that? Removing the PCB next. I thought the buttons were snagging, but actually it was the screw posts in the center. So after a bit of wiggling, all good. The base has a tilting stand that can be flipped in both directions. You can either make the unit face upwards or downwards. So putting it on an overhead shelf works too. Removing the little stops in the case so it can come out too. I think there's a drop of glue involved. Thank you. 
now to take care of the correct voltage selection. The manual lists the jumpers for voltages in a neat table. While I'm in here, the mains fuse needs a bit of scrubbing too. Now with the correct voltage setting, I can finally give it a quick try. Seems to work. The bubble LED board is socketed. Also. The little lens has a slight crack in it. Bummer. But at least I can clean it. There was a bit of dust on the inside. Removing the button caps for a good clean and easier access to the actual buttons. And since the range switches are indeed switching the input signal, I give all the contacts a good wipe down too. Notice the dummy switch in the middle. It is just so that the other two ganked switches can pop out. It doesn't actually switch anything on its own. I tried to remove it for lubrication anyway, but it snags somewhere and since I don't want to break anything, I just leave it and add a bit of grease. Contacts, clean. Springs, check. These can also fly quite some distance. Mounting the PCB again.
adding the buttons again. Note that they have a squiggly line on top to indicate the pressed or released state on the case. Following the adjustment procedure next. Since that insists on a connected battery, I improvise a battery box with four nickel metal hybrid cells. That way at least something is connected and provides voltage as well as a current sink. Also, this way I can double check the charge current. In devices that have built-in batteries, these often act as DC filter caps. A battery is essentially just a really big capacitor, so why waste space in a portable unit? So if you ever remove a battery from such a device, be sure to replace it with a suitable capacitor at least, to smooth out the rectified DC input. The adjustment procedure is basically asking for a few reference voltages and tweaking of the appropriate potentiometer. and time to button it up. Let's check what probes we got. Looks interesting, but first let's remove the gunk from the bag. The leads are not better. It took several IPA soaked rags to clean them. Not the best silicone ones, but I still like the feeling. Oh, surprise! Both ends of the test leads are screw in adapters. The set came with a few different options for those. Finishing up with the stand and the case clips.
But wait, what about the batteries? Well, I checked around a bit and found conflicting information. But the common ground was, unless left unsupervised, charging nickel-metal hybrids with the given current should not be an issue. The originals were NICADs for sure, so the charger is just pushing 150 milliamps into the batteries at all times. I thus decided to make myself a battery pack with four 3000 mAh nickel-metal hybrid cells. Cats went high resistance when full, so eventually there wasn't enough power to continue charging. Nickel metal hybrid ones are heating up instead, so it should be fine to swap one for the other as long as one keeps an eye on the temperature during charging. I'm pondering a voltage limiter too to cut off at the maximum allowed voltage, but that would need extra circuitry. And that's it for this episode, I hope you enjoyed this little carry on meter, see you next time! <laughs> but before blooking, blooking, oh plugging, darn it. <laughs>